when I first came, um, I did find it quite challenging because, um, as you can hear, I've got a, a Liverpool accent. Um, the children here, uh, a lot of them have got quite strong Fatuhivan accents. Um, and some of the, the, the quotes, some of the things they come out with, I really didn't understand at all. So, um, the first the first year or so, that was quite challenging. Um, but the children themselves, from day one, I've always warmed to them. They're lovely. The children are lovely. The parents are the salt of the earth. Um, and that's encouraged me to stay this long. It, is that, you? do you think, a reason why you stayed that long? Do you... Do you feel that there's maybe, well, why would I potentially move anywhere else? Initially I stayed because I had a child who was young and I'd moved to Rain Hill, which is only up the road, and I thought I would spend long hours in school and it was a short distance to travel home. If I'd have travelled to a school further away, I'd have spent less time in school, less time with my child. So that was my initial thinking. Then as he got older, um, I was enjoying the school. I kept getting promoted went through different posts. Uh, when I went to move, um, I was getting more and more challenges. And I just got to love the area. I got to know the parents. I now know parents, grandparents and the grandchildren. And I've got excellent relationships with them. I think that helps a lot um, towards the ethos of the school. And how would you identify the ethos of the school how and and has that changed has it stayed the same or um i think the ethos of the school at the moment we like to consider it as an oasis because obviously especially in the towns we're at the moment um, it's challenging for everybody no matter where they live and when the children come in here everybody who walks through the door says that's exactly what it's like an oasis where the children are at peace where they're happy where they're content and I really think the children thrive because of that. And I think it's so important. They're not going to learn if they're not happy. Did you see any kind of change in regards to how the children kind of interact with the school through COVID? And, and how did you generally kind of deal with that and the kind of disruption that was? It has definitely um, brought a lot of disruption to the school. Um, because obviously for the first lockdown, we would have maximum eight children in school the rest were at home some parents found it challenging to go online found it challenging to use the it um, we were there to help and support but it still can be challenging there were children who would spend the whole day with their grandparents some grandparents have, are not used to it or have not got the wi-fi so the children were going home at night and working late into the evening which again isn't isn't good for them so they have come back, some of them with anxieties, or they did come back with anxieties. Some of them came back um, quite a way behind where they should have been. Some of them came back, you know, where we'd expect. Um, but it's been a challenge now to get them back to where they should be. And we're still working on it and we've put lots of things in place for them. Do you, do you would you consider um, how... In terms of the area, do you think there's significant disadvantages in terms of the community itself and the kind of economic status of, of the families here as opposed to other places? Um, the only measurement we've got for that really is the fact that we do have quite a high percentage of children who are receiving pupil premium, receiving free school meals. There are a number of children who we helped um, through a voucher system, through food food through the food banks etc and are still doing at the moment um, because a lot of parents lost their jobs in the in the lockdowns and also there seems to have a lot of, of problems with money in the home they found it very challenging so we've helped as much as possible but it has, has had an impact on the families and has that impacted your budget and how you manage your budget well, we have had help from the government to support with this, so we have managed. The impact has come from the fact that we've had to use teaching assistants and teachers in a different way, doing extra tuition, etc., and paying for that. Uh, we've currently, only this evening, got eight classes going to support children who have fallen behind in either uh, literacy or numeracy. 
and kind of predicting kind of forwards and the impact that that will have how do you see that kind of playing out in the future do you think it will do you think it's possible for us to catch up over a relatively short period of time or do you think it will be a longer lasting legacy I think it very much depends on the child and the environment they're coming from. Um, obviously, we have some parents who have the time to sit and work with the children if they've fallen behind, and we have others who don't have the time to do that. So it's very much dependent on the ability of the children and, and, and the environment, I believe. But I don't think it's going to be a short-term fix um, because there are more and more issues arising even now around... Um, finances around um, well anxieties from home etc and we're working with those things as well which obviously don't help if a child's trying to make progress in the academic side how how would you say the demographic has changed of the school whilst you've been here in terms of who comes into it do you yeah think? yeah um when i first came here i used to te- talk to a teacher who'd been here 20 years before me and she told me about children coming here who were wearing clogs and children who were coming who weren't wearing any shoes at all. And I would listen to that and think, gosh, that's, you know, it's amazing that would happen. When I first came here, there were a lot more children I felt who were, looked more disadvantaged that they didn't have the uniform or there were real issues. I don't think that's as prevalent now. I'm sure there are issues at home with finances, etc. But every child in here has the uniform. If they haven't, they get help. There's there's money in school to support things like that. So, um, it's not visible that a child is more disadvantaged. And thinking about recent changes, do you notice any significant recent changes in in the type of children that come here and and their backgrounds and? Uh yes. When uh, I first came here 36 years ago, um, I'd say a lot of the parents were um, working in industry, they were minors at the time. Um, We seem to be getting a lot more professional people coming in now. Um, And I think that's due to the fact that there are larger housing estates being built round about. And we're getting children from those as well as from from some of the supported housing that, that surrounds the school. And, and in respect to kind of numbers, has, has that kind of stayed pretty steady over recent years? Uh, when I first came here, it was two form entry school. Uh, I believe several years before that, it was three form entry. It was a very big school, St. Austin's. Um, in fact, that's why St. John Vianney was built, uh, because of the overswell, there were that many children. So when I first came, it was two form entry, and that's one of the changes we went through. Um, we had to scale down to one form entry. Um, that's stayed the same now, um, with the exception of nursery, the younger children. There seem to be less nursery children coming through the school now. Um, possibly uh, because of COVID, parents did keep them at home, um, and you can understand why, you know, the issues surrounding that. And it just doesn't seem to have picked up again since COVID. Do you think that will change? Um, having spoken to other professionals, um, it's very much like that across the borough. I don't know if it's uh, as prevalent in other schools, but it does seem to be across the borough that there's less um, children coming to early years. I'm hoping it changes, and there are adverts out, and you know, we're trying to promote the school as much as possible, but um, the numbers are, are lower than they were. Do you think, generally speaking, the schools within the borough <clears throat> have very similar issues and concerns? and? come up against the same kinds of challenges um speaking to head teachers we all seem to have the same types of frustrations about budgets finances um the anxieties that have come about because of covid um trying to get children back where they should have been before um we had lockdowns so i think at the moment yes we're, we're having the same types of issues